this video, we'll be creating a two-dimensional ribbon controller instrument. Let's get started. What we have here is a musical controller that we can slide our finger across to change the pitch. And we can modulate the sound by applying force. And to make it look fancier, we have an addressable LED strip that lights up where our finger is placed. I have already covered a lot of the technical stuff in previous tutorials, so I highly recommend that you watch them. Here's what we need to buy. Soft pop membrane potentiometer. I'm using the 500mm strip for this video. Arduino Uno. Resistor kits. Jumper wires and breadboards. Force sensitive resistor strip. This sensor measures how much force is applied to it. Addressable LED strip and capacitors. Materials for soldering if you don't have any already. Make sure that you have plug header pins. Our first step is to solder the sensors. Please refer to my soldering video if you would like to learn. It should look like these. And now we can hook things up. Let's Google soft pot membrane potentiometer Arduino and we see lots of helpful diagrams. Let's reference this one. This pin is connected to the 5 volt power. The middle pin is for the pull up resistor and the analog input. I'm going to directly plug the resistor to ground. Instead of using the 10,000 ohm resistor, we're going to use 470,000 ohm resistor, and I'm going to explain why later. And on that same row, connect the wire to the analog input number zero. And this pin is for ground. Next, let's hook up the FSR sensor. This pin is for the 5 volt power. And this pin is for the analog input and pull up resistor. Connect the wire to analog input number 1. And on that same row, connect the 10,000 ohm resistor to ground like this. Let's layer these two sensors on top of each other. And I'm going to put it on top of a piece of wood. Putting it on your desk is good enough for now. We can reuse the serial communication code from before. And now we can open up Max or Pure Data and let's test to see if we're seeing the sensor values. Awesome. By the way, do not place your fingers on each end at the same time like this. This will damage the sensor. We can map these sensor values to synth parameters. Common thing to do is to map the pitch to the ribbon sensor value like this. And the force sensor value can be mapped to a filter, for example. The cutoff frequency of the filter increases as we apply more pressure. Or we can use an FM synth and map the force sensor to the modulation depth. The possibilities are endless. What's next? Well, we can add an LED strip to this controller. 
please reference my previous tutorial on how to connect and program. We need to add these variables and functions for the LED. And this is the main part of the LED portion of the code. We're reading the ribbon sensor value and mapping it to the LED position. Because the ribbon sensor is linear, we can simply use the map function like this. So the ribbon sensor's 0 to 1023 analog value is mapped to the 30 individual LED positions. When we let go of the sensor, the analog value will be something like this. Values are below 15. So we have an if statement that will turn off every LEDs when we have our finger off of the sensor. The reason why we used 470,000 ohm resistor is to make sure our ribbon sensor value is linear. Otherwise, this map function wouldn't have worked as nicely. So here's what it looks like with the 10k ohm resistor. It doesn't look quite right. But the 10k ohm resistor value will result in the sensor value being more stable especially when we lift our finger off. Here's a comparison. If we used a 1 million ohm resistor, it's even more linear, but the sensor value is too unstable. So the 470,000 ohm resistor is the perfect middle ground for this tutorial. We now have a ribbon controller musical instrument. What's next? Creating an enclosure will be nice, especially if you want to carry it around and play live shows. You can try something similar to what we did in the finger drum controller video and use a durable cardboard box. If you have woodworking experience or have access to a 3D printer or a laser cutter, then you can make an enclosure that way. You can add another sensor for dynamics like I did with this instrument. Simply adding a button for triggering the sound will be fun.